Well, good morning once again, everybody. It is so good to see everyone here on Christmas week. Hi, my name is Eric Bucci, and I am the lead pastor here. If this is your first time here, if you've not been here in a long time, we want to welcome you, everyone that's online as well. Can you guys do me a big favor like we do every week? Let everyone know how much you love them, nice and loud. All right. Well, it's so good to see everybody. Uh, it's coming. Christmas is coming. And so I just want to remind everybody, we're going to have five services, five candlelight services. And uh, we encourage you to invite folks. People will come. People will come if you invite them. It's about an hour long. And it's going to be great. You wait until you hear the choir and all the great music. But it's really about a journey to miracles. And it's going to be about that. We're praying that people would find a miracle of knowing Christ and that the birth of Jesus Christ and what it represents would not only be something we celebrate, but something we experience, that we experience miracles in our lives. We're praying that God would bring healing upon relationships just by being here in this place together, that God's anointing, God's presence would touch people. So we'll have five services on Thursday the 23rd. We're going to have it 7 and 8.30 p.m., and then on Friday, which is Christmas Eve, everybody, that's 3, 4.30, and 6 p.m., and then you can run to Target and buy the last-minute gift. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'll probably be doing. I'm just kidding. I won't, that won't be me. But that's what's going on next, uh, this coming week. So invite folks to come. Go on Facebook and, and take a tag and send it to folks, and 85% of people say they will come with you. That's what they tell me, what George Barna says. And so I tend to believe George Barner. He's a Christian uh, statistician, whatever. But anyhow, we'd love to be able to do that. Also, uh, we are having uh, only online services only next Sunday. So we're just going to reach as many people as we can over the holiday season before Christmas. And so on Sunday, we're going to give the team a rest, be with your families. And so we will be online only, but then we'll be back the following week in person. Okay, everybody? Just want to let you know about that. All right, and then today at 1 o'clock, Grove Track, it's going to be a great time how you can be a part of the church and what it means to be a leader. And everyone is a leader and what that means. And so we'd love to have you come to be a part of that. Well, we are in the middle of a series called The Beatitudes, and basically it's, it's basically Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, a very famous sermon. And today we're talking about this. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Blessed are the peacemakers. How many of you like to have a little peace in your life? Yeah. How many of you really enjoyed uh, this Christmas season? I like the Christmas season when it has C in it, but there's another C happening right now we're not going to talk about. <laughs> we're not going to talk about that. But it's like always there's something new coming around, right? How do we deal? How about in, during Christmas season we have family situations, right? We have to go and see people that we would normally never go see if they weren't part of our flesh and blood. Right? There's, there's, come on, just be honest here. There's some people that you don't want to see, but you have to see them. So last year you had an excuse of the C word, but this year you can't use that excuse. So you're going to have to see people. Maybe uh, on a more serious note, maybe it's the first time you've had a, first time you had a Christmas with a loved one. Maybe a mom or dad or spouse or a child. Or, or maybe you went through a divorce and... Uh, or whatever you went through, and you're by yourself, maybe you blessed, you messed up, and you realize that this is a very difficult time of the year. I heard someone say recently, he was saying, I just can't wait till this Christmas thing's over. It's just a hard time. Listen, we understand it's a great time of blessing. On the 21st of this month, it's the shortest day of the year, least amount of light, but I wanna let you know that Jesus is the light of the world. We're praying, yes. We're praying for that. And so uh, in this time of peace, we want to pray that God's peace would be upon you and just to know that God is with you. Well, today we're talking about this. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. And this is from the Beatitudes, where Jesus on, is on the mountainside. He's preaching before he begins his message, if you will, his big message. This is his introduction, which is incredible. It puts things in perspective, and it's an incredible uh, what he's talking about. We're going to go into the rest of the sermon, which will blow your socks away. It's incredible what Jesus talks about. It's going to be so controversial. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Jesus, everyone thinks Jesus is just this mamby-pamby guy. He's not. I mean, he, he doesn't mess around, and, and he really gets to the heart of situations. I don't know about you, but I, I found that each one of these beatitudes is like a nail in the coffin of self. I'm like, oh, okay, Lord. I mean, it's like we have to bury ourselves because, you know, when you bury yourselves, you can truly rise. 
And, and as long as you're living for yourself, you're going to be always having a hard time. So blessed are the peacemakers. We'll talk about that today. So becoming and growing in peace. Becoming peacemakers. That God wants us to be peacemakers. And just to kind of review, this is what we've been talking about the very first week. And by the way, this is good news. Jesus says, blessed are the poor in spirit. There are people out there that feel like they have nothing to give. They're poor in spirit. And he says, such is the kingdom of heaven. And he's also saying to us that you may feel your poor in spirit, but really, the only hope you really have is when you get to the point and you realize that you need God. When you get to that realization, everybody, you're in a position to be blessed. Blessed are the poor in spirit. We also said, blessed are those who mourn. And let's make no mistake, when you're poor in spirit, you realize what you don't have. And it's okay to mourn. It's okay to mourn, for you will be comforted, the Bible says. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the, the earth. And how is that supposed to happen? How are the meek? I thought the strong inherit the earth. We talked about that as well. Those that hunger and thirst for righteousness, when you have a diet of the kingdom of heaven, and that's what I'm praying. I'm praying that you and I will grow more and more, that we be more hungry for God. The more we eat, the more we will grow in Christ. The more we eat, the more we grow in Christ, and the more we want to eat, the more we want to be satisfied. And then we talked about that. We talked about being merciful, which is something that's an oxymoron in our culture today. And then we talked about the pure in heart last week. Maybe we talked about that and how impurities kind of cloud our vision of Christ and cloud relationships. Well, today is blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. And the word blessed simply means blessed in every capacity, having what you need, being in a good place, we talked about, for the last several weeks, we talked about it actually comes from the word from a Greek island in the Mediterranean where everything you need is right there. Isn't that a wonderful place to be? Blessed. Blessed. Think of a little baby being held by its mother. And just after nursing, the baby's just laying there, hearing the mother's heartbeat, and goes to sleep. Don't you dare go to sleep unless you're a baby. Okay, because I do have my bottle up here. All right. Bless, I'm just kidding. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Well, what's the deal with that? Why is it so sexist? Sons of God? What about the women? Well, I'm glad you asked that. Let me just get my ladies to let you know, I'm not really fond of the fact that uh, the Bible says that we are the bride of Christ. So I'm called a bride, so you can be called a son, okay? Are we good? <laughs> All right, thank you. It literally means children of God. And when it says sons, you have to understand that culture back in those days. And it wasn't the culture that God wanted. It was the culture that they lived under, that those sons got the inheritance. And that's what it basically means. But God says in the New Testament, there's no male, there's no female, there's no slave, there's no free, no Gentile Jew. We're all the same value to God, and you matter to God. So this is not about sexism. This is about the complete acceptance we have through Jesus Christ. He abolishes these things that would bring division doesn't mean that we don't celebrate the differences, but we realize that each of us have a tremendous value. And so the word peace there, blessed are the peacemakers, comes from the, the, the Hebrew word shalom. And, and in, the, uh, the, in the Greek Septuagint, what that is, Septuagint is a Greek translation of the Hebrew Bible. When they use the word peace, uh, they use the same word here in the New Testament which founds its way in shalom. And shalom has different meanings. It's, it's a very rich word and a very rich understanding, but it means wholeness, completeness, fulfillment, inner rest, living without deficiency or lack. How many people like to have a little more shalom in your life? Yeah. Tell your neighbor, shalom. Now go home. No, I'm just kidding. No, shalom, right? Don't go home. But sh <laughs> shalom. And so it means this wonderful peace. It's God's shalom. And God wants us to be in that place. That place of peace. That place where we are with God. It doesn't mean that you're just kind of inebriated on the things of this life and you don't know what's going on. A lot of people think that's peace. No, that's not peace, everybody. Some folks are so inebriated on the things of this world. We're so drunken on this world. We're so distracted by the things of this world that we, we think we have peace, but we don't. It's almost like someone that has a fatal disease and, and they're going to die, but they give them morphine and give them comfort measures. And, and these comfort measures makes you feel like everything is fine, but you're on your way to death. My friends, that's what the enemy would do. He wants to get us so comfortable that we don't think we need God. And sometimes that's the biggest test for a culture is when God blesses us. And let's make no mistake about it. Being in the United States of America, we are blessed. 
And so we have to realize that peace is not about things. Peace is found in a person. So it means wholeness, completeness, fulfillment, inner rest, living without deficiency or lack. So how do we become peacemakers? He says, blessed are the peacemakers. I want to be a peacemaker. So what does that mean? I have to make peace? Well, hold on a second. We'll talk about it, what that means. What is a peacemaker all about? Well, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. That's what Christmas is all about as well. Our child is born, Prince of Peace. That's what we believe, right? This is all about that. This is what Jesus says. He says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives. See that, everybody? Not the world's peace. The world's peace is everything has to be aligned up. You have to have enough money in the bank. You have to have a good place to live, have good relationships. Then you have, no. He says, not as the world gives. I do not give, give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Wouldn't that be nice? Notice that there's some part that we have to do. Don't let your hearts be troubled, and don't let yourself be afraid. Well, how do you do that? I'm so glad you asked. We're going to get to that in a few moments, okay? We're going to get into that in a few moments. But we think about Isaiah 9, 6 through 7. When I was struggling with my faith for about a year, I almost gave up my faith. I was this close to giving up my faith in Christ while I was in a seminary. Some people call it cemetery, and it was a cemetery the first year. Second year, actually. The third year was good. So uh, I, I had a hard time understanding about this. And, but then you read the Bible, and you read 700 years before Jesus came. There's this guy by the name of Isaiah who wrote Isaiah 53, who said, by his stripes were healed, and talks about what Christ went through. He also talks about this, prophesying 700 years before Christ came. I read the book of Daniel, I read Psalm 22, all these prophecies of Jesus. It's absolutely amazing when you look at the Bible and you see how much is there, how many prophecies are given. And there's no way this can happen by accident. It's, in, it's absolutely amazing as you study that God is real. I've helped me through this process. And Isaiah was a real help in me giving my faith completely back to God. For a child is born to us. This is about Christmas, right? A son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. What does it say, everybody? Prince of Peace. His government and his what? will never end. His peace will never end. The peace you have right now, the peace of everything going well, it's going to end. Your health might end. Circumstances might end. But the peace of God never ends. What do you want to base your peace upon? Temporary cotton candy or sandcastle or castles in heaven? That no rust, no mold can take away. No feet can break away. This is what we're talking about. This is the prince of peace that Jesus offers to us. He's telling us to be peacemakers. He is rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David. For all eternity, the passionate commitment of the Lord of heaven's armies will make this happen. So, peacemakers. For those of you listening online by the way, if you want to catch up with our sermons, you can go to cornerstonetreasure.com. You can also go to Spotify or Apple iTunes. Type in search bar Cornerstone Cheshire, and you can subscribe, and we'll send you the sermons weekly, audibly, so you can you know, listen to it and catch up, or go to the website. So those that are not seeing this, I'll have to explain to you. This, I saw this on a bumper sticker a number of years ago, and it's very, very true. Here it goes. No Jesus, no peace. When I say no there, for those who are listening online, can you guys say hello to those listening online? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. It starts with uh, K N O W. I'm a great speller. I'm like Dan Quayle. Okay. No Jesus, no peace. Here's another one. No N O Jesus, no peace. And that's really the truth, everybody. That's really the truth. If you know Jesus, you know him, not just know about him, but you know him, you experience him. You know Jesus, you will know the Prince of Peace. But know Jesus, there's no peace. It, it is a mirage. It is a temporary drug that you are intoxicated with and in called the world. And it is fictitious. You are on a collision course with a place called hell that Jesus does not want anyone to go to. And there's only one way to God. It's through Jesus Christ. He is our peace. The wrath of God is upon Jesus, so the wrath of God is not upon us. My friends, it's available to you and I. And I think we forget this, everybody. That's what the Prince of Peace is. No Jesus, no peace, with an N, K-N, 
No Jesus, no peace. And Ephesians 2.14 2, says this, for he himself, he himself is our what? Jesus is your peace. Not the economy, not your marital status, not what school you're in or who you're dating or what clothes you're wearing or what hairstyle you have. That's not your peace. Jesus is our peace who has made us both one and has broke down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility. You see, everybody, there is no peace without Jesus. You see, all of us know, everyone knows instinctively, there's, I'm not right. We mentioned several weeks ago when I asked you guys the question, I said, who's the hardest person to forgive? And everyone said unanimously, myself. Everyone knows. Everyone knows something's not right. How beautiful is it? When you know you take all your inadequacies and give them to God and let his peace shower over you. That's amazing. For he himself, he's our peace. He's our peace who's made us both one, has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility. Has God broken down the dividing wall of hostility in your marriages and your family? Has God broken down the walls of hostility with relationships with family members? We're going to get into that. How do you deal with people who don't want peace? We'll talk about that in a few moments. But as far as it be to me, I'm going to do the best job I can, right? Not to allow this hostility. He himself is our peace. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off. While we were sinners, Christ died, right? He, he, um, excuse me. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him, we both have access to one spirit and one father. The best thing you can do for your marriage is love God more. Not changing your spouse. Not changing all these things. You love God more. You say, God, change me. Lord, change me. Forget about, listen, you can't change your spouse. You can't. My wife's been trying for 20 years. She can't change me. She finally said, Jesus, I give them up to you. <laughs> I don't have to change a thing, as Aerosmith says, okay? And he came and preached peace to you who are far off and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access to one spirit and one father. I like what C.S. Lewis said. I know I quote him a lot because I'm one of my favorite people that is no longer with us, but great books. God can't give us peace and happiness apart from himself, because there is no such thing. How many of us run after, even the pastor, if I grow the church larger and do this and the other, and I can get more staff, and I can do more sermons, and I can da 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 then I'll have peace, and I'll be happy, God. If I can, no, no that doesn't bring me peace. It might temporarily bring me peace, but you know what? It's all about Jesus. This is going to come, this is going to, this, this is going to all go away one day. But Jesus is ever, right? He's forever. And so that's the key, everybody. Now, I know that's obvious and we say it, but what does that mean? We're going to break it down even further what this means. Okay, peacemakers, no Jesus, no peace, no Jesus, no peace. And we need peace to give peace. You can't give what you don't have, right? Now, let's be honest here. This is one of the frustrating things about church. If you're struggling with anxiety and depression, now the pastor tells you, you're trying the best, you're going to counselors, you're on medication, you're eating tofu and you're having um, no meat and no dairy and eating rocks and, <laughs> and all that. And, and now the pastor says, by the way, don't be anxious. Duh. I, what do you think I'm trying to do, right? So that, I don't know about you, but am I the only one that's bothered when I used to go to church in the past and people say, you got peace. I'm like, nope, that's what I want. Okay, so this is not a guilt trip on you if you're struggling with peace and you're struggling with depression this time of the year. Okay, please, everybody? There's no condemnation in Christ Jesus because peace is not a feeling, it's a position. Let me say that again. You might want to write that one down. Peace is not a feeling. It is a position in Christ. You may not feel peace, but you can be in peace because your feelings will come and go. Listen, everybody, I'm telling you the truth. You may be anxious. You may be having panic attacks. 
He could say, God, I don't know why I'm going through this, but I thank you in the middle of the situation that you are my peace. I thank you that I'm going to get through this in Jesus' name. Now go see your doctor, go see a counselor, go read the Bible, come to church, eat the right food. I'm not against any of that. But he is our position. And in Christ, we have peace, even if everything else in your life is screaming, no peace. He is our peace. Your emotions are just a bunch of chemicals in your mind. They come and go. But God's peace is not a chemical. It is foundational. It holds it all together, everybody. So if you're going through anxiety and depression, stop beating yourself up. You're not a bad person. I know it's irritating. It's the most wonderful. Shut up. (laughs) Bah humbug. Some of you are Grinches, but that's okay. God loves the Grinch. Need peace to give peace, okay? And so let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you that I go away. I go to prepare a place for you. Listen, there are days where I'm like, God, just take me home. Am I the only one that ever feels that way? I love my family. I love, but sometimes I, I long for home. You know why we long for home? You know, you know why we long for home? This is not a home. We're on a trip. We're driving through. This might be a rest stop with the dirty bathrooms and, and sub, sub, subpar food. Okay? It's a rest stop. But we're going to a better place. He has us here on purpose for a purpose. You're not supposed to be completely satisfied on this planet. You're supposed to be satisfied in Christ. And the reason you're not satisfied is it's not all there is. So if you understand that the best is yet to come, I'm going to do something better. A gold medalist goes through the pain because a gold medalist knows that they're going to get the gold medal as they compete. They go through the hard training. And right now, let's make no mistake, sometimes it's hard training. That's why you need each other to encourage each other. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many rooms. Listen, everybody, this is not all there is. In Philippians 4, 6-7, it says this. Do not be anxious about anything. Well, I'm anxious for everything, so I just blew the verse. Just blew up the verse. I just destroyed the Bible verse. I just threw a grenade at the Bible verse, right? Do not be anxious for anything. Well, how are you supposed to hand up? By everything. By prayer and supplication. Tell God how you feel. Say, God, I'm nervous about this. God, I don't want to go to that Christmas party. God, I don't want to see my son or daughter. I do, though. I don't want to see my, I do want to see my mother-in-law, though. I do. I really do. I'm talking about somebody else because I love my family. Hallelujah. I'm going to get myself in trouble. But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, God, I know it's rotten right now, but the best is yet to come. There's a woman in our church. Her name is Olive, and she was going through cancer. She says, Pastor, I'm going to testify when I get through this that God healed me. I'm like, this is the kind of person I love. I love everybody. But she's like, she's going through pain. She's going through all this horrible stuff. She says, I'm going to testify when I get to the other side of this. And she's going to testify, and we're going to make a testimony of it. Because she said in the middle of her pain, she's going through a hard time. She says, I'm going to get through this. And that's what can happen. In Philippians 4, 6, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts. That's right. Your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Of course, we know whatever is true, whatever is noble, right? We want to think on the right things as well. That helps. But do not beat yourself up because you struggle with having peace. Realize that you are in Christ and you have peace in Christ. Remember, peace is a position, not a feeling. We want the feelings of peace to come on us. Don't make no mistake about it. But we have to base it on a position. Isaiah 26, 3 says this. You keep him in perfect peace. Who's what? Mine is stayed upon you. That's right. We have to fight with our minds. Don't allow stinking thinking. Don't allow the trash talk to happen. Don't allow it in your mind. Don't listen. There was a time, uh, I'm going off the script a little bit. There was a time after I I had a breaking of a relationship, 
and my, I was listening to mixtapes. <laughs> you guys don't know what mixtapes are. Back in the day with these little discs, they were called records. We put them on a record player we'd make, and we'd make mixtapes. Anyhow. And I had on there Chicago, Jer Journey, Foreigner. And I'm listening. Don't want to live without your love. <laughs> you know, and in Chicago, you know, uh, uh, all these wonderful songs, they're great songs, but they're all about broken relationships. I, I can't listen to this stuff anymore. It was horrible, right? I don't want to live without your love. And I'm sitting there, oh my gosh. So now I come to you with, oh, I can't listen to this stuff. And I was going through a broken relationship. So I, I literally had to stop my mixtape. Why don't you glad we don't have mixtapes anymore? <laughs> horrible things. Anyhow, you got to, if it bugs you, focus on what's true, what's righteous, what's known. You keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon you because he trusts in you. See, peacemakers know Jesus, no peace, no Jesus, no peace, need peace to give peace. So we want to receive peace of Christ so we can give the peace away. Peacemaking is our, peacemaking is our goal. Well, how do we have peacemaking? This is the truth. Peace does not just happen. We must make peace. What? That's right. We make it with Christ. Christ gives us the peace, and we make peace with him in concert. Well, how do you make peace? How do you make peace happen? Well, he's called us to make peace. You know, situations at the office or at the home, you and I, listen, I, I'm guilty of this too. When you're driving and you're trying to find a parking space at Target, and it's Christmas Eve, it's, it's 11.59, it's closed in one minute, and you have to pick up your gift for your wife or your husband, and you see that parking space, and you praise the Lord, you put it on Instagram, and then some knucklehead pulls into the place. That peace, be still, hallelujah. Peace doesn't just happen. <laughs> we must make peace. Peacemaking is not a passive characteristic. We have to fight for peace, everybody. We have to fight for peace. Because peace is an elusive thing on many times. Peace is something the enemy tries to take from you, and you have to fight for it. How do you do that? Well, the Bible says in 1 Peter 3.10, for whoever desires to love life and see good days. How many, people want to, how many people want to love life and see good days? All right, I do. Let him or her keep his tongue from evil. Okay, so stop complaining. All right? When you complain, you know what you're doing? If you have a wound in your arm, your arm hurts. My arm hurts. Oh, my arm hurts. Every time you complain, all you're doing is punching yourself. And you make it worse. Complaining never helps anybody. Telling God what you're going through is okay. Okay? So whoever desires life, let him keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace. We have to look for peace. We have to be on a hunt for peace, and we have to pursue peace. It doesn't come easy, everybody. you got to work hard for it. you got to look for it. God, where's there peace in this room in Jesus' name? Where's there peace at this horrible family gathering that I'm going to call good? I'm going to find one person at the table that's decent. I'm going to focus on that person, and we're going to build a fire of peace together. I'm going to find peace because there's peace. God, you're with me right now. So seek peace and pursue peace in relationships. Don't look for problems. Look for peace. There was this gentleman by the name of Talmachus. He was a monk, and he had peace. He was all by himself. Listen, it's easy to have peace when you're by yourself. You're in the middle of a desert, and you're in a cave, and you're drinking whatever you're drinking, water. <laughs> and you're just, you're at peace. Oh, God, I love you. And also the Holy Spirit said to him, I want you to go back with people. Oh. So the guy goes back to Rome. And, and by this time, Rome is now Christianized. It's a Christian nation, Rome. Now it's Christian. And he goes to this entertainment. He goes to Netflix. Oh, I'm sorry. He goes to the amphitheater. And in the amphitheater, they have these gladiators. And these gladiators are battles to the death. They fight each other until they kill somebody. It was a horrific, bloody, horrible thing. And so he is overwhelmed by it. You know what he does? He runs in the middle of the arena. He runs in the middle of the arena, and one of the gladiators stab him and kill him. Three days later, they outlawed these games. The emperor's like, we cannot do it. The word got out what happened. 
And Honorus the emperor said he banned the games and no longer was anyone being slayed in the amphitheaters and coliseums because of a man who paid the price to bring peace to a situation that was far from being peaceful. That's not passive. That's being bold and strong. That's Jesus says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. That's the kind of peace. Where, that's radical and that's strong peace. That's what God would do for us. You see, strive for peace with everyone and for the holiness without which no one will see God. People are not going to see God if we're all upset all the time. If we're always ticked off at what's going on in the world, I, I, I stop watching the news. I just like 10, take 15 minutes a day and I'll read through it quickly. Or I'll just scan. I, I don't have time to hear how bad everything is. I just, it's too much. Am I the only one? It's just horrible, right? It's horrible. I, we, we know about it, right? We don't talk about it anymore, okay? With all humility and gentleness and with patience, bearing with one another in love, uh, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit and the bond of what? And what's the bond of peace? Jesus is the bond of peace. See, peace does not happen. We make peace. Peacemaking is not passive characteristic. And here's the one that's really cool, everybody. You're, you're going to like this one. We can give peace supernaturally. You and I can give peace supernaturally. How can you say that? Well, the Bible says it. Jesus talks about these, these gentlemen. He sends his disciples out. I'll go ahead and read to you. And whatever town or village you enter, find out who's worthy in it. Stay there until you depart. As you enter the house, greet it, hello. And if the house is worthy, let your what? Come upon it. But if not worthy, let your peace return to you. You can bring blessing. We, have, we can bless and we, we can bless. And we can curse. I don't want to curse, right? How about in the name of Jesus, before you get to work, you have that cantankerous like, room where everyone's at the water cooler and just, just slang everybody. In Jesus' name, I speak peace on this office. In Jesus' name, I speak peace you go in there and you're an air conditioner. You're in there and you're a fresh breath of air. You're like opening a window and blowing out the stale air. You come in there, in Jesus' name, I speak peace. How about this one, everybody? Hello? How about you open the garage and you can't get the car in and it's raining outside because the bicycles are there? In Jesus' name, I speak peace. I speak peace. <laughs> Why is it the people we love the most, we're the least patient with but what would happen if we say before we pull into the driveway lord i speak peace over my house right now before you go to that 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 dinner table at holiday with that uncle everyone has an uncle that's why they say uncle okay so how about in jesus name i speak peace on this house how about a child that's wayward or a parent that's wayward how about walking past them at night and put your hand on the Lord in Jesus' name? I speak peace. It's not a you. You're asking God's peace to penetrate those people and circumstances. I'm not making this stuff up. It's in the Bible. Okay? And so we, we have the power to bless. So we're not blessed people. I speak peace over you in Jesus' name. Receive peace. We can bless each other. I mean, sometimes we're, we're in a circumstance right now. We don't feel peace, but Jesus is in the boat. Remember the story? He's out, he's out in the sea, and it's, it's, they're like, we're going to die. Where's Jesus? He's sleeping right there. Jesus is in you. You can say peace. So say peace to your situations. Don't burst into the room and go, peace! No, don't, don't, don't do that. Don't, that. That doesn't work. Just go, peace. Peace. You don't have to go like that, by the way, okay? <laughs> to all those in Rome who are loved by God and called to be saints, grace to you and peace. Every time they gave a letter, pretty much this was, they say, grace and peace. Where does peace come from? Peace comes from God's grace. You can't manufacture it, but God gives it to you. Now you, you give it away. It's something that you can give away. If possible. See, sometimes it's not possible. You're like, yeah, I was waiting for you to get there. If possible, so far as it depends upon you, live peacefully with all. Beloved, never avenge yourself, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. And you're going to see it happen, okay? In Matthew 10, 34, it says, do, do, you, do you not think that I have come 
Now, this is, this is amazing, okay? You guys ready for this one? I just threw an M80 in the middle of the sermon. If you know what an M80 is, it's, it's a piece of dyna, a quarter stick of dynamite. Okay. Do not think that I've come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. What are you doing? I've just been preaching about now Jesus is saying he's not come to bring peace. This is a contradiction, right? I mean, I just blew the whole sermon apart by this verse. Hang on. Hang on. For I have come to set a man against his father. Some of you are like, praise God, I got a proof text now for my family. No. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter in law against her mother in law. Can I hear an amen? <laughs> And a person's enemies will be those of his own household. Oh, no, oh, amen. Okay. Whoever loves, this is the point, everybody, okay? This context. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. You can't have peace if you love your wife more than you love Jesus. You can't have peace if you love your son or your daughter more than Jesus or your girlfriend or your boyfriend or your own life. There is no lasting peace in that way. It is a false peace. The only way you can have peace in a relationship is that Christ has to be your peace. That's what happens. Jesus said, unless you hate your own life, you have no part of me. Compared to God, everything else is secondary. That is the only way. In that relationship with Christ, now you are in a place to broker peace. But that has to come first. Do you see that, everybody? That's the context of what we're talking about here. Peacemakers, no Jesus, no peace. No Jesus, no peace. We need peace to give peace. Peacemaking is our goal, and Jesus' peace is supernatural. I have said these things to you, that in me, in me you may have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. You will have peace. How many like Hellman's mayonnaise? Okay. I don't know about you, but I like to have a hamburger that's, that's mooing. I, I, want the, I want to hear the cow moo when I bite into it. I like it bloody. For all you veggie burgers out there, God bless you. We'll pray for you in the next service. But I like meat. I like to kill the animal. I'm sorry. I know. I'm just kidding. All you vegetarians, we love you. We do. But, you know, and I like to have my hamburger, you know, and I like to get a juice, a syrup on the outside, bloody on the inside. Put a big slab of mayonnaise on it with tomato and jalapenos and lettuce and onions. And, uh, but there's a problem. I don't know if you recognize this, but uh, mayonnaise is a miracle. It is. That's why they call it Miracle Whip. Um, mayonnaise contains two elements that don't go together. You know what it is? Oil and water. Oil and water don't work together. So... How does the mayonnaise is full of oil and water? Well, how does it come together? I'm so glad you asked. There is an emulsifier. Sounds like a fighter. An emulsifier. An emulsifier is another compound that brings two together and makes a new compound. You know what that is? Eggs. The eggs pull in the oil and the water and mix them together, and you have mayonnaise. That's what happens. That's what Jesus can do in our life. Jesus' blood is an emulsifier. He can take a situation that you and your wife are oil and water. But if you would go after Jesus and stop going after other people, and stop listening to people that have bad marriages, and stop listening to bad advice and say, I'm going to go after Jesus. I'm not going to try to change my spouse because I can't change my spouse. I'm going to go after Jesus. Jesus, you're who I'm going after in Jesus' name. Well, whether she here does, I don't make a difference. You put Jesus in the middle of that marriage. You may be oil and water, but let the blood of Jesus make you one in him. Yes. This is what Christ will do, an emulsifier. And that's how you can take horrible sets of circumstances. Losing your job, bad health, everything's going bad. I'm putting Jesus in the middle of that, and he's going to emulsify me, and I'm going to have a compound of peace. And I'm not going to allow situations to change me. This is what Christ can do in our lives. Blessed are the peacemakers. 
for they shall be called the sons of God. Let's bow our heads. Father, I pray right now, all of us in this room, we either are going through it or we're going to go through it, where our peace is challenged. And Father, we're praying for people that are struggling internally with peace, maybe struggling with depression or anxiety. Father, first of all, we thank you that you are very akin to that. You understand. You understand emotional health. You understand mental health. And Father, we just right now break off condemnation. And right now, if anyone who feels they're sub, subpar because of this, we thank you that you love them. We thank you, Father, that peace is not an emotion. It's a position in you. And Father, we are praying that people that are in you would find their position, would overtake their emotion in Jesus' name. Lord, we even pray for healing right now upon people's minds, people's emotions in Jesus' name. We ask for your healing touch, Lord. We pray even today, Lord, something would break off of people right now. Depression would break off. Anxiety would break off. Condemnation would break off in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, we also pray for marriages in this place where they have not said, I'm sorry, or asked for forgiveness in decades. Perhaps sleeping in different rooms or sleeping in the same room, but there's a wall between them. A wall of hurt, a wall of regret, a wall of frustration, a wall of betrayal. Father, I press, pray that you would bring the compound of your blood and that you would change it in Jesus' name. That there be peace in relationships and forgiveness in Jesus' name. Father, you are the Prince of Peace. You came at a chaotic time in the history of Israel. A people under subjection of the Roman government. A people that were highly taxed and mis mistreated. Were second class citizens. But you came small as a baby. So Lord, we pray that we would not despise the days of small beginning. But we would take the peace we have and the faith we have as a mustard seed. And we would, we would allow you to multiply. So, Father, we pray in Jesus' name. Come on, how many would say this morning, there's some areas that I need God's peace in relationships? Come on, let's just be real. Come on, raise your hands right now before the Lord. Father, I pray right now for everyone raising their hand, everyone that's raising their hand in their heart. We ask for your peace that passes all understanding to guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. We pray, Lord, that you would bring peace in Jesus' name. Now, with every head bowed and every eye closed, let me ask you a question. If you were to die today, do you absolutely, positively know you'd be in heaven with Jesus? There's only one way. It's through Jesus Christ. You can't be good enough. You can't go to church enough. It's nothing to do with that. It's everything to do with Jesus. And Jesus paid the price for us. He is our peace. He broke down every single wall. And only through Jesus can you enter into God's presence. Only through Christ can you be free from the past and move ahead. Only through Christ can there be true, lasting peace. And maybe you used to walk with God and you're not walking anymore. Or maybe you never surrendered your life. Jesus has always had a guest room in your house. But the truth of the matter is, Jesus is not, he's never in a guest room. Jesus either is the owner of the house or he will not come into the house. Have you given your life to Jesus? Jesus does not want to date. He wants to be married to you. That's the only way it works. All in. And so maybe today is your day to go all in. So it's no better show of hands. Somebody would say, I used to walk with God. I don't walk anymore, but I want to. Or how I've never given my life to Christ, but right now I'm going to do that. Come on, let's be real. Anyone this morning would say that? Just raise your hand nice and high and say it. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone in line? Okay, let's pray this prayer together in Christ Jesus. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. I believe you're the Son of God. I believe you rose again from the dead. I ask you right now to forgive me of everything I've ever done wrong, both known and unknown. And right now, I choose to step down. I give you my life. It's not my life. It is now yours. Take it. Fill me with your Holy Spirit, I pray right now, in Jesus' name. Thank you that I am now your child, in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. If you prayed that prayer, we believe you can, became born again. And Jesus never says, say a prayer and goodbye. He says, come, follow me. We are a community of people that long to follow Christ together, to encourage each other. This is a place where we encourage each other. This is not your answer. We are a group of people that work together to bring each other to Jesus. 
Our whole objective is to bring you to Jesus and to work for that. If you're giving your life to Christ, you want to pull out one of these cards in the front pocket of your seat. You just put it in there. It says, I, my decision today. At the end of the service, there's boxes in the back. Or you can go online, uh, go into your phone and text. You can text BELIEVE to 860-499-4888. That's BELIEVE to 860-499-4888. Right after the service, we'll have folks up for your front or the information desk and hand those cards. Okay, everybody? That's what's happening. Listen, we have a chance also to give back, and we were able to make a difference. We're sending an offering to Kentucky this week as well to help the folks, the churches and, the, and, and homes that have been destroyed there through um, Project... Um, I can't remember the name of it. I'm sorry, my mind goes blank, but we were part of this organization that, that is really vetted and a great organization. We're doing that as well. But you can text Cornerstone Cheshire to 833-245-5608. Also, you can go online and also mail, and then there's boxes in the back. You can go ahead and do that. And let me tell you something right now. You trust God. You realize everything is God's anyhow. And you tithe and you give. God will take care of your needs. It's not a get-rich scheme. It's getting free inside, and God's word is true. So, Father, bless this offering today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let me just say a blessing. May the Lord bless you. May his peace surround you. And may we be peacemakers as we walk in his peace and give his peace away and receive his peace. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Amen.